Hi guys, this is Edward, and welcome to the 6th video of creating a Flappy Bird game with Godot. In this video we are going to be working on the game over panel that shows when the game ends, which is when the bird hits the ground. Without further ado, let's get into it. So once the game is over there is a sprite with some text, a panel with a score, and a few bonus that have to be displayed. And instead of just dropping the null in the HUD node, we all use a container since they are quite related with each other. So I'll add a container node. I'll rename it CNTR Game Over, which stands for Container Game Over. I'll set its size to the same size of the view, which is 144, 256. I'll add a texture frame node. Rename it Text Game Over. And for its texture, I'll load the Level Game Over sprite. I'll resize it so it fits the size of the sprite. And to have it horizontally centered, I'll set its exposition to half of the view width, minus half of its size. And to have it not so at the top, I'll move it vertically, which you can do by dragging it while pressing shift. I'm gonna place it at 50, since we will need space for the panel score. And for the moment, I'll hide the bonus instructions, the Xbox score, and the bird so we don't have them on our way. For the panel score, I'll add a texture frame. Rename it to text panel score. And for its texture, I'll load the panel score sprite. And make sure its size is just as big as the size of the sprite. And to have it horizontally centered, since its size is 113, I'll set its position to half 144 minus half 113. And I'll set its Y position to 90. So it is 40 pixels away from the game over texture. By the way, I don't know if those are the values that the original game uses, but they look pretty well. Now for the bonus, I'll use an Xbox container because there are one next to the other and that will make it easier to place them at the right position. So I'll add an Xbox container, rename it to Xbox buttons, and I'll give it the same width of the panel score and place it at 160 on the Y axis. Let's add two texture buttons. The first one I'll name it BTN Play and the other one BTN Scores. For the normal texture of the BTN Play, we will assign the button play normal sprite. Now, in the original game the buttons are just one sprite, so just with the normal one will be enough. But I modified the Neliru and managed to create a pressed sprite. So for the pressed texture, I'll add the bottom play pressed sprite. And in the bottom scores, which is actually a little board button, as its normal texture, I'll set the bottom score normal sprite. And as the pressed texture, the bottom is called pressed sprite. And the buttons aren't really centered. So in the Xbox, make sure to set the alignment to center. I'll also set the separation to 9, so we have them right at the edge with the score panel. And also make sure the height of the Xbox is the same height of the sprites. Let's run the game to see what we have so far. And we can press the buttons, but of course they don't do anything yet. By the way, I gotta say that I have actually no plans on implementing this little board button. I'm just adding it because I made the pressed sprite and didn't want to waste it. So yeah. Now, we don't want to show the game over panel right away, but when the game ends. And that happens when the bird goes to the ground state. So in the game over container, let's add a built in script and name it CNTR game over. Just like the node, I'll delete what we don't need. And in the ready function, we'll look for the bird by using utils.getMainNode.getNodeBird. 
and if we have it we're going to connect the signal state changed to the self node to the function on burst state changed which we will create down here and let's not forget that when this signal gets emitted it will send us the bird itself so we will have a parameter named bird and in here we're going to ask if the bird that get the state is equals to bird that state grounded and if it's so we will call the function show so let's go back to the 2D view and hide the gain over container and show the score, the instructions and the bird let's try it out and when the bird hits the ground the gain over panel shows and it actually shouldn't just appear all of the sudden it should show with an animation but we will take care of that later let's now focus on getting the important things done like making this button work and what we want this button to do is reload this scene so we can just play again so let's add a script to the button play and name it btm play i'll delete what we don't need and in the ready function i'll connect the signal pressed to the self node to the function on pressed which i'll create down here now to reload the current scene we just have to get the scene tree and call the function reload current scene let's give it a shot and when i press the play button the scene starts over again but the problem is that it suddenly changes unlike the original game when there is a transition between each stage fading to black and fading from black so we will have to implement that as well and to do so we are going to use a global scene because we want it to be consistent while changing between scenes and a global node or scene besides of being accessible from everywhere it never gets deleted during the lifetime of the game for instance when i reload this scene everything in the scene gets deleted and created again on the other hand this doesn't happen with the utils and game node so if i get a score of 11 when i reload the scene again we we'll still have a score of 11 because the game node which is global never gets destroyed and the yeah this is something that we will be fixing later so what we are going to do is create a global scene named stage manager which will do a smooth transition between scenes and it will be a scene instead of just a script like the utils in game because we will use more than one node for the transition let's just do it and you will see what i mean on the way let's create a new scene and add a simple node to it and name it a stage manager i'll also add a texture frame and assign the text to rect black which we will use to do the fade into black let's give it the same size of the view 144 256 and enable expand so the sprites have the same size as the frame i'll rename it to text black and let's save this scene in the scenes folder a stage manager dot tsn i'll add a script to the stage manager node and this script won't be a built-in script let's save it in the scripts folder as a stage manager dot gd hit create i'm going to delete what we don't need and as a stage manager we want this node to be able to change to another stage or better say to another scene because for Godot everything is actually a scene but not for us so I'll create a function named change stage with a stage path as a parameter so in this function we'll do three things fade to black then change to another stage and finally fade from black the easiest one is change the stage so let's do that one first and to do so we just need to get the scene tree and call the function change scene and it's asking us for the path of the scene file we will pass the parameter we created which is stage path so again even though we're calling them stage path change stage and stage manager technically they all mean scene this is just a distinction i do to tell between scenes that are stage and scenes that are game objects so to change the stage this is pretty much all we need to do
Now for the two transitions, we will use an animation player node to take care of that. So let's add an animation player node. I will name it Anim and switch to the 2D view. Let's create an animation named Fade In and another one named Fade Out. So in the Fade In animation, we're going to add a key for the texture frame's opacity. With a value of 0, hit Create to add the new track and at 0.5 seconds, I'll add a key with a value of 1. Let's give this animation a length of 0.5 so we don't have extra time. Now, I'm going to change the transition of the first key by clicking on it, and then opening this panel that gives us a specific details of the selected key. And under the tab Transition, you'll see that this key has a linear interpolation, and it makes it look like so. But I'll use this one, which will make the transition to the next key go fast and then slow. And it looks like so. And that's all for the fade in animation. Let's switch to the fade out animation. And at time 0, we'll add a key for the opacity with a value of 1. Hit create to make the new track. And at time 0.5, I'll add a key with a value of 0. Let's set the length to 0.5 and just like we did before, I'll change the transition of the first key but to this one, so it goes slow and then fast, which makes it look like so. And now that we have all the animations we need, let's go back to the stage manager script and make sure to leave the opacity of the text to 0 as default, because we don't want a black screen when we start the game. So to fade to black, we will get the no anim and play the animation fade in. And to fade from black, we will play the animation fade out. Now this of course won't work because this line of codes are going to be executed one after the other in the same frame. And what we needed to do is wait until the animation is over and then run this line of code. And fortunately, there is a pretty neat way to do this in GDScript. After playing the animation, we'll call the function yield, along with two arguments, an object and a signal name. For the object, we'll pass the animation player node. And an animation player has a built in signal name finished, which gets triggered when it finishes playing an animation. And I don't want to display coroutines just to say what is happening here. But in simpler words, what this function does is wait until this signal gets emitted. So when we call this function, you'll play an animation. Then it will wait without stopping the flow of the game until the signal finished is triggered, which will happen when this animation is over. And once that happens, it's just going to continue with the other lines of codes. So it's going to change the stage, and then it will fade out the black texture that is on the screen. And we don't have to tell it to wait until finish again, because we don't have anything else to do. So now that we have this done, let's make this scene global. So in the project settings, under the tab auto load, we're going to add the stage manager. Let's close this panel. And now back to the plain button script. Instead of using the scene tree, we're going to use the stage manager and call the function change stage. And we need to specify the path of the stage file, which is in the stage folder under the name gamestage.csn. So we're changing to the same stage, which is the same as reloading it. Now this will totally work, but having to specify the path in here is okay, but it can be done way better. And since we already have an stage manager, we can easily improve this. So in the stage manager script, I will create a constant name stage game equals to the path of the game stage file. And back to the play button script, we can say instead stage manager dot stage game. Let's try it out what we have done so far. And when I press the play button, it kind of does what we want, but not quite, because the texture is not getting thrown on top of everything and it's quite offset. So back to the stage manager scene, we will do the same we did with the background and the HUD, which is use the canvas layer. So I'm going to change the type of the stage manager node to canvas layer. 
and to make sure it gets wrong on top of everything else, I'll set its layer to 5. Now in the script, we need to change the type this script is extending from, which is now canvas layer. Let's give it another shot. And there we have it. And the transition actually feels a little slow for this game. So I'm gonna set the speed of the animation player to 2. Try it again. And it feels much better now. We also have to solve the ISO with the current score, because it keeps its value after reloading the stage. And it should get back to zero when the stage manual changes the stage. So in the stage manager script, let's create a signal name, stage changed, which will get emitted right after we call the function change scene from the scene tree. And now in the game script, in the ready function from the stage manager, we're going to connect the signal stage changed to the self node to the function on a stage changed, which we will create down here. And in here, we are just going to set a score current equals to zero. Let's also set the initial value of the score current back to zero. Let's give it a shot. And when the stage gets reloaded, the current score gets back to zero. Now there is an issue with the transition. If I press the play button before the fading is completed, you can see that the changes say function gets called again, so it is a brain the fading animation. So if I press the play button 5 times, there will be 5 of this function waiting until the animation is done. And once that happens, those five functions are going to change the scene, one after the other, which is really bad. And there are a few ways we can solve this. The most straightforward solution is using a boolean variable as a flag, so we can know if the stage is being changed. Or we can just stop the whole game from reading input, so the player won't be able to press the play button. If we use a variable as a flag, we can easily prevent this code from being executed. But the problem is that the player will still be able to mess around with the game, which will surely lead to other issues we will have to deal with. On the other hand, by stopping the game from reading input, the player can't do anything but wait until we show the other stage, which is what we want. But other scripts will be able to call this function, so if we have a timer or something scheduled to change the stage, and it is being changed, we will have a problem. So the best way to solve this is by using a combination of both solutions. So let's start with the flag. I'm going to create a member variable name is changing equals to false. So in the changes say function, the first thing I will do is set the variable to true. And at the end, set it back to false. Now I want it to be false once the stage has faded from black. So I'm going to make it wait until the animation is finished. And now to prevent this function from changing the stage while it's been changed, we will ask if it's changing, and if it's so we're going to return, and that's all we need to do with the flag. And in order to stop reading input from the player, we just have to get the sentry, get the root node from it, and then call the function set disable input, along with true as argument, and we want the input back when the transition is over. So at the aim, I'm going to call the function again, but passing forward as argument. Let's give it a shot. And there we have it. Well guys, this is gonna be it for now. In the next tutorial, we're going to keep working on the game over panel. So make sure you are subscribed so you can know when the next video is up. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to press the like button. I also want to mention that I have created a Patreon page. So if you have found value on my videos and you would like to support me, take a look at my Patreon page. Your support is really appreciated. And until next time, see you later.